Hello and welcome back to the Suburban Chateau. Tonight's video is going to be called Everything's Coming Up Roses, but wait, didn't we just do that already? This is part two. In part two, instead of making bouquets, we're going to be painting some bouquets. And uh, if you remember, I showed you, this is my paintbrush holder, but um, a little, I got this little uh, coffee can from Michael's. It was about 90% off the one year. And all I did was bought it. It sort of sat around for a while until I got to the point where I was ready to paint some roses on it. And I, and I did the one stroke painting on it and I'm really thrilled with how it turned out. So tonight we're going to be talking about some techniques and I'm going to recommend that you check out Donna Dewberry's videos on YouTube. She's really the person who invented the one stroke painting technique. I'm just learning myself. So, um, so everything's coming up roses again, but tonight we're painting. So I thought tonight, um, before we get into too many of the painting projects, I just sort of review some of the basics. I'm gonna make some roses and just show you one of those on a slate. I look for clearance. So I bought a whole pile of slates at Michael's and they were $5 a piece. For me, that was half price, which is a super big bargain on slate. Um, but I thought, and you're gonna see me painting tonight on some beautiful tins that I also got at Michael's at 90% off. So for me, painting on surfaces, I look for a deal. Something that I can paint on and make beautiful, but in a very reasonably priced way. I'm gonna be using the one stroke painting technique. Um, I am just learning. And um, it's not that I'm an expert at this by any sense of the imagination. I highly recommend, and as I say before on the Donna, Donna Dewberry tutorials, they're all over YouTube. That's how I'm learning how to do things and I'm making mistakes along the way as well. But I'm gonna share with you just a basic pink rose. I'm going to use um, some of the paints that Donna Dewberry recommends and hopefully I'll be able to demonstrate somewhat the um, technique, although she is a master and I'm just serving. So one of the things, I'm gonna make a pink flower that's gonna have tones of white. And this paint is called Titanium White. It's a folk art multi-surface satin paint. And um, the reason Donna Dewberry recommends it is she calls it a fluffy texture. And if you see it sitting on the plate, it kind of sits above the plate. My other paint is not folk art paint. And you can see the difference almost immediately. It's very runny. But we're gonna put these two fairly close together on my plate so that I can manipulate the brush and incorporate those two colors. And I'm just using like an old, small paper plate. This is an easy way to do it. To those two paints, I'm gonna also put on my plate a little bit of floating medium, and I, just a very little bit. It just helps that paint kind of combine. And again, this is a folk art floating medium, and the only place I could find that was on Amazon. Um, I do find that, that when I'm looking for things, when I see on some of these tutorials, sometimes the only thing I can find is um, right on Amazon. My local hobby store doesn't have them. So to this, I am using an angled brush. I have some Donna Dewberry brushes. I don't think this is a Donna Dewberry brush, but they're lovely. But I just wanted something that felt really good. This is a really, I love this brush. It really works well for me. I'm making sure it is a little damp on the brush before I start this process. And I'm just gonna catch a little floating medium just to start on my brush, kind of push that through there. And then what I'm trying to do is almost create, almost like as if there was a runway between these two colors of the white and the pink. And I'm gonna load my brush and it's gonna take me quite a bit back and forth. And it's kind of fun because I'm hitting that floating medium when I get back to the bottom. And if you can see, there's like some definite distinctive colors coming through, the white on the edge, then a lighter pink, and then all the way to that crimson color. And I've loaded up my brush. We'll see if this works well, if we've loaded up enough. And I'm just gonna come over and try a simple cabbage flower. And as I go, I may reload my brush again. What I'm looking for is that kind of distinctive two-tone. The white on the edge, then a light pink, and then that, I'm gonna get a little more of that dark crimson here so that you can see the gradation in the color. So white to light pink to dark pink. And I'm gonna do a simple cabbage rose. You're gonna see me do a lot of these tonight as I'm working on the different tins. Here we go, I'm gonna find the center of this slate to get my first petal, and I'm just gonna make like a little mark. So when I do my first petal, 
in the Donna Dewberry video, you'll see this too. She likes sort of like a scrubbing motion. You're gonna create the edges of this rose. And I'm just gonna scrub along those two little lines and they're gonna meet over here. And you see it, 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 got, it gets a little bit of a pretty petal edge to it. Now, I think my dark pink could be a little bit darker. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna reload my paintbrush. I think I don't have enough paint on this paintbrush, but that's probably part of my issue. And this takes a little while to get going. Now I'm gonna go over this again. That way I can capture maybe a little bit more of that darker pink hue. And it, it just goes right over the one I already did and it's fine. And you can see the gradation in color. I'm gonna do five petals to make the base of this rose. I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna work my way backwards. I never thought I could do that until I practiced this a little bit. And I made another petal there. And I'm gonna go back over here and again, make it, um, I'm not as happy about that. Let's make that guy a little bit bigger. And again, you just start with what you started and go right over it, doesn't hurt a thing. Reload my brush. Again, I've got the darker pink, the lighter pink, and then the white on the edge. And I'm gonna continue, I'm gonna make two more big petals on the base of this rose. So another big chunky, just like a little motion with my finger. I don't know if being a violinist is helping or hurting on this process. It seems like I have some good control on that first finger. That's my bow arm, so. <laughs> All right, so there's our initial base for this flower. And you can see the little gradations in color. Every flower is gonna have some of those gradations. So for the next round, I load up my brush again and I'm gonna just make three petals this time. So I'm gonna go kind of further inward, start right here and you can see that gradation of color. Again, I'm just gonna use that little, just like a little bit of knuckle motion to make it, it fills it in and you can see the darker color and every flower is gonna have kind of that nice gradation or that mix in it. Okay. So I'm gonna put the last little finishing touches on this and I'm going to put, I'm gonna make in here a little bud or the center of the flower and I'm gonna make an arc, a little bit of a half circle up and do that same thing coming down. So I'll unite, make sort of like a, a tube if you were in the middle of the flower. On this side, I'm gonna put a last little leaf. Oh, that turned out nice. And on this side, I'm gonna do the same thing, a last little bit of touch. And there you have it. Now, I've been doing this since the summer. It is now March. And I've done maybe 100 or so of these. I'm sure I'll get better as I go, but there is one cabbage rose. And now I'm gonna share with you um, some of the other things that I put these roses on. And uh, man, they make great gifts. And um, so I'm just having a lot of fun with it. But there's the basic stroke. bought um, some of these containers uh, over the summer and I never really got to do anything with them. I have no idea how this is going to work because it's a rounded container. So we're going to see if we can make a, at least one of the flowers on this side. This is definitely something I see 
being multiple flowers. Just a little bit, very glossy surface, but you can see again that stroke that I'm going for, kind of that, it's just a wiggle of the first finger. I can go backwards with that stroke and because my brush is well loaded, that edge is still that light colored edge. <laughs> and then come down here. <laughs> and again, I'm just going for that cottagey vibe um, um, that I see so much on my tool painting wear that I have. Here's the interior petals, just making a couple of those. I really like how this is working out. Oh, this is really hard to paint on because it's so rounded. At least the, um, at least the shells are a little flatter. And then here is, this is the hard part. This is the bud of the cabbage rose and I'm gonna make it big. Oh, wow, that really turned out nice on this. This is a really good surface. It, it might be because it's such a nice flat surface. Oh, I really like that. Okay, don't touch it. Sometimes, again, less is more, don't touch. So that's what that rose turned out. Like I got my lighting a little bit better, but I'm sort of thrilled with how that worked. Since I have wet paint and I have a few more minutes, I'm gonna throw a couple more of those roses on a couple similar items. So I'm more happy with how that one went than any of the shells. And again, I just absolutely love that color combo. And I think this will work on all of the ones I have. And these be, like I'm probably gonna give these as gifts or, you know, just see how it works out. But I'm gonna try to use up my paint tonight because I don't wanna waste my paint. So I'm gonna do a bunch. So here's my little guide to start. Then I'm gonna make that first petal. Oh yeah, this is really turning out nice. I'm happy with, now my paint is working with me a little bit better. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Very happy with how that's turning out. Well, maybe it just took a few to get started. <laughs> Sometimes that might be all it takes. And then some interior leaves, we'll just do a couple of those. But again, this brush loading technique is awesome because it gives you those depth of color. Oh my goodness. It is nice when something goes right. <laughs> and I'm just gonna get pick up a little more floating medium. I noticed that my brush is starting to dry out. I don't know if it's because of the light. Um, then I'm going to do this little bud in the middle. So it's a little arch here at the top, arch here at the bottom. Oh, yes. I think it must be because this is a better surface to paint on than, than the shells. But this is going much better. And I think, too, that the fact that it's a bigger brush, I'm having a little less, um, just a little less, I don't know. It's not, I'm not hesitating as much on it. I like that darker color. I want to make sure that's on the inside. This is this brush is very well loaded at this point. And just a little bit of that floating mini. Here's a little bit of a darker teal. And the, the thing I love about these flowers is they're so fast. Like I'm on my third pot, and it's you know it can be a very fast process. I think I found that this summer too. Like once I got going and I had my brush loaded correctly. Oh, I'm really happy how this is turning. And the nice thing is you can do this on furniture. I really like the way these little buckets are turning out. I want to use up all my paint though because it's getting late. Okay, so we'll put some interior petals. So then, here we go, load up. I'm gonna just load it up real quick. Here we go with that interior bud. Arc at the top with the brush, arc at the bottom. Coming off here, I mean, this is a really good brush too. I think that's also, oh, I'm really happy with that. 
I'm just gonna go down the line while I have the special piece that I'm working on and I probably won't let this uh, air until after Christmas because this is going to be a Christmas gift and I'm working on um, a bit of a household housewarming household gift um, for my youngest who's getting married so I'm going to do a little bit of the floral pattern and then we're going to go under um, a little bit later and put um, their name when they get married so um, here we go Hope it goes well. <laughs> So that was our first pass, the first layer of petals on the bottom. And I'm pretty pleased with that, how the scallop is pretty even all the way through. There's a little extra pink down here, but I think it'll it'll kind of blend in once I get the next layer on. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the next layer. For this one, it's usually, I do about three leaves. And I put just a little bit more floating medium on it um, the last time I was through, so should help it. So we're just going to do about three petals in the center to kind of put this part all together. It's a little hard to paint on the slate, to be honest. Um, definitely the, the metal cans and trays have a bit of a smoother surface than this does, but it's working. put that center bud in and I'm pretty pleased with how that turned out. A little extra petal there, extra petal on this side. Okay. 
I'm pretty happy with the pink one. That turned out pretty well. Let's put the blue one next to it. Set the pink brush down. I'm just gonna get a little bit more floating medium because this has been sitting for a minute, but I think it's in pretty good shape. I'm gonna put this one. I just wanna make sure there's enough room for their name. So put this one kind of beside it and it's gonna be a smaller rose, smaller sized paintbrush. Again, these are just like a cabbage rose. My favorite flowers. So here's the second layer of the blue flower. Oh, I'm gonna get that in the frame. There we go. Push that over a little bit. So we got the first five petals in. This is the three petal stage. Slate, I'm not gonna lie, the slate's a little hard to paint on. I'm just trying to outline, especially with that white color, those petals, so that it gives it some definition. And then we'll come in and do the little bud in the center. That looks nice. And I think it'll also dry. I think the blue will show more when it dries. And it's very like transparent color. And then I'll put a third flower over here and then we'll add some leaves to it later. Here's a final look at how that project turned out. Obviously I added in some leaves. Um, you can see the little violets that I added in as well. And then of course I put their name below. I also wanted to share with you how the different pots turned out. I was pleased with those. Added a third rose to all of those. And then I also painted, had a lot of fun with a, um, a bread basket that I found at a yard sale. And I added some flowers to those. I'm going to use it in my kitchen. Um, but everything that I've shown you today, I put two coats of sealer, a, um, a satin sealer on top of them, just to sort of protect them and keep them from getting messed up. So I hope you got some great ideas. Here's some of the pictures that I was able to paint, the one step roses on, really, really fun. Here's another one in um, an aqua color. And here's the final product, really turned out great. So I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about this easy painting technique. And as I said, I'm not an artist, but I really enjoy painting this and it's super relaxing. And uh, now it takes some practice, but, um, it's just kind of fun and in the end you have something to give someone as a gift and uh, and look for things to buy that are on sale at your craft stores. I would wait until this was like 90% off at Michael's and then I bought these pots and then painted the roses on them. So, uh, so I hope you'll give this a try and definitely watch Donna Dewberry videos if you want to learn the right way to do it and uh, I'm just sort of messing around with it but go to the real experts. Um, you can get inspired from me, but go to watch and see what they do because they have an amazing eye for it. And of course, Donna Dewberry is the person who uh, invented the one-stroke painting technique. So check her out. And uh, I hope you had a little bit of fun with Everything's Coming Up Roses, part two.